April, good to see you. Today you have three tips for us to have a conversation about money and financial values with your kids. Teaching kids about money and financial values isn't just about preparing them for financial success. It's about teaching them responsible decision-making, boosting their confidence, and reducing their vulnerability to scams and manipulation. And for the most part, April, they're not teaching this in school. We're not seeing it at all in our area, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to find one thing or the other as my children get older, either I've scarred them for life with the methodologies that I'm going to share with you, or they're going to come out far ahead financially. We're going to hope it's for the, the latter, latter but yeah. it's going to be the latter. I'm, I'm going to hope for that. But having a healthy relationship with money and understanding money, in my opinion, can also really help your relationship with your children when they're constantly mm -hmm. asking for for things and not understanding the value of money when they have some hands-on experience themselves it really can be a game changer mm -hmm. so let's share those tips now then your first tip is to tailor your approach to their age and understanding so break that down between young children tweens and teens for a young child, so maybe we're talking ages three to, to five in that category, maybe three to six, just kind of depending on the child, something just as simple as having rewards that are monetary and having them see what it costs to buy something. You know, if they've got mm -hmm. a quarter for every time they do a chore and what they want is $5, how long is it going to take them? They start to realize that it's not an instant process to accumulate money and they start to understand how much they have to have in order mm -hmm. to purchase something that they want, starting to learn at least a little bit what things cost, just kind of some sort of a reference point to start with. Then mm -hmm. around the age of seven, eight, maybe nine, um, what I did with, with our oldest, she is about to turn 11. And when she was about seven years old, I started her with a budget. Um, we did it for Christmas time and I'll share a little secret. Also, if your kids are motivated by money and they're going to be doing the chores anyway, um, and you're going to be spending the money on gifts they want to buy for people anyway, increase that allowance around, you know, Thanksgiving, maybe early November, if they're doing extra chores to earn it, mm. they understand the extra work to have extra money. And then you can work with them on a budget. Uh, our oldest um, had a really hard lesson on this the first year we did that with her when she realized how much of an impact that taxes have on what she, on what she <laughs> wants to buy. But she learned that at the age of seven, instead of when she got her first paycheck and realized mm. how much was, was being withheld. So valuable life lesson. Um, and then after that really depends on the maturity, but perhaps a budget that's not specific to one project. Um, learning how to budget, learning how to set aside money for different things. Another thing that we did as well, and this works very well because it's a visual process. A lot of this can be done digitally. I'm a paper person, so maybe this is just me. I think using actual dollar bills and having a visual where, for example, you have spend, save, and share. What we did with our oldest is we had her learn from her weekly allowance. The first 10% goes to tithe. That goes in share. And mm -hmm. then from there, an appropriate allocation between spending and saving. And what are you saving for? Talking about those things, having some goals, and really just having that visual. We always did this with singles, with, with dollar bills, so that you divide it up easier. And it's just a great visual to help them start to learn. Mm -hmm. Also helps you budget really early. You're right. All right. Tip number two, use everyday opportunities to teach like grocery shopping. This is another really good one. Great life skills. And you can make it fun, especially when they're a little bit younger and they'll still be seen in a grocery store with you. But, uh, you know, things like understanding sales and, you know, we don't spend money just to save money. But if it's something that we need or we will be buying anyway, then how are we going to do that? And another tool that you can use and you can even work some math skills in there too, looking at different uh, sizes of, of packaging and just because it's less expensive doesn't mean it's the best value. It might be that it's a smaller size. So working with them on understanding the value of 
a unit of whatever it is instead of just this box of cereal is less expensive than that box of cereal, understanding that the bigger box of cereal and that example is a better deal because per unit is, is less expensive. Our mm. almost 11 is good at this now. She um, will go in the store with me and do this, and I'll even have her log in. We shop at Kroger on, on their website all the time and order groceries, and it's often her responsibility to go through and, and look at these things, and it's a great learning tool, and she actually enjoys it. That's great. Yeah. I like it, too, for the needs versus wants. Like, you don't need those M&Ms. I know you want them. Yep. Exactly. I do have to monitor the shopping cart because those M&Ms will slip their way into the cart if, if know, we're not right? talking about it. <laughs> That's her kit tax for doing the shopping for you. All right, exactly. last yep. April, <laughs> lead by example. Kids are amazing and they are always listening, whether we're talking about smaller children all the way up to teenagers and beyond. There are certain habits that start young and again, having a healthy relationship with money, having discipline. Um, and I will also say allowing yourself to spend some too on the opposite side of that, not being so tight fisted that they're, they're afraid to spend. Um, just making mm. sure there's a healthy relationship there. Kids are amazingly astute and they're watching and they're learning even when you don't think that they are. So mm -hmm. just being aware of those things, I think can go a very long way. Absolutely. April, if somebody would like your help getting the ball rolling to have this conversation with their kids, how can they reach you? You can give either of our offices a call at any time or feel free to visit us at theretirementfamily.com and you can make a submission or request on our website. All right. April, thank you. Thank you, Erin.